Hi, my name is Sienda. I am a student at the University of Botswana. I'm studying mathematics, but in my spare time, I write nonfiction and fiction, I guess. Um, I started a hashtag on Twitter with my Twitter account called Sienda Writes, and the hashtag was called African Nations in High School. And I started with a question that I asked to my followers, which was, um, if your country was a student in a high school, which student would it be? And I, I tried to focus mainly on Africans because most of my followers are African, so I got a lot of very interesting um, responses. And um, the way that I, 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 I expected it to happen was I started off by saying some three countries that I'm familiar with, my country, um, the one I was born in, Swaziland, and the one that I'm very familiar with, South Africa, um, just to try to, you know, get the thing started. And a lot of people started to contribute with their own countries as, as well as other countries on the continent. So what would happen is, next to the hashtag African Nations in High School, you would say, well, um, for example, Botswana would be this stereotypical kid in high school that it seems like everyone had at the high school, you understand? So that was a very interesting um, hashtag and it was very funny and it was very witty and a lot of people got involved and I thought that was very interesting. Um, what inspired me to start the hashtag was I was just curious um, to hear about the perceptions that Africans have about their own countries as well as other countries and I wanted to hear of Africa from Africans. I wanted to learn about someone's country without it being like... Um, the way you know like for example a lot of the things that i know about other african countries are from western media um i hear about congo on cnn and my i almost my whole idea of congo is from cnn um i hear about tanzania from cnn i hear about egypt from cnn i don't you know and and, and a tool like twitter i think is so amazing because it gets you to um hear about someone's country from their own voice so it gives people a voice and it gives those of us that are interested in hearing people's voices a platform to listen and i think that's very interesting and this hashtag did that and in a very humorous engaging way so that made me very happy um for example um i got to hear about countries that i had never really you know thought about to be honest with you because i I mean, I write predominantly for a South African audience, um, so I'm usually just in the area, the static area, when it comes to um, the politics that I hear about or am engaged in. Um, but a country like Tanzania, I've always been interested in it. I've always wanted to go and visit. In fact, I had made plans to visit last year, but it didn't work out. Um, and I was always interested to find out what is their reputation on the continent and what do people think about Tanzania, those who live in Tanzania and those who live outside it? And there was a very interesting, of all the, you know, the, the themes of different countries, what other people thought of different countries, Tanzania seemed to have a very consistent um, reputation or character, you know, high school character student that everybody thought represented Tanzania. And it happened to be the kid that, a lot of people would say Tanzania is the kid at school that studies very hard, gets help from the teacher every day after school, does the extra homework, stays late, basically does everything to pass but still fails. And I mean, it's very funny, but it made me wonder why they have that perception. And um, unfortunately, I don't really know which people I follow who are Tanzanians except like one or two ministers or something. But I would really be, very, you know, it got me very interested in finding out why people think that. Um, there were also several themes about other countries that were recurring themes. Um, for example, Nigeria, sadly, um, was always, you know, the student that was a hustler or kind of a thief or kind of a crook or kind of like basically an untrustworthy classmate. And it was other people said that, which I, I mean, I didn't like to hear that, but I mean, you know, that's the reputation that they have on the continent. But uh, myself, when I contributed um, to the Nigerian bit of the hashtag, I thought of Nigeria as, you know, the student who has a lot of potential, but um, the teachers kind of know that, you know, they're not being supported at home or the parents kind of are not being very, which is what I think. I think um, Nigeria is a country that has a great deal of potential. It could be one of the, it has one of the most hardest working 
citizens on the continent the most you know in innovative and all this but they just i feel like you know the political corruption or the leadership corruption is just really holding them back and it's really really tragic and i think that so i think N nigeria is you know a country that has a lot of potential but leaders that are not kind of recognizing that potential further than their own interests which is very sad and um another country that had a re um, a recurring theme very funny one was zimbabwe and zimbabwe people um all said things like you know zimbabwe is that kid who's you know i said zimbabwe is that kid that is really smart but the father's always embarrassing him in front of the white kids which is obviously a play on you know zimbabwe's reputation in the west because of mugabe um a lot of people said you know zimbabwe oh one person said a very my the fun my favorite tweet about zimbabwe i really wish i could remember um who said it but um someone said zimbabwe is that beautiful girl a uh, smart beautiful girl at school who you want who nobody dates because her dad is crazy <laughs> again a play on mugabe so that's a very interesting thing and i think what i found interesting about the zimbabwe thing was how much people had faith um in the future of that country but simultaneously knew that you know kind of understood how much of the potential of that country is totally dependent on Mugabe's actions, which is what I think um, is the reason why every time they refer to Zimbabwe, they would refer to a father figure or, you know, to Mugabe indirectly. So that was very interesting. Um, what else? Yeah, South Africa as well. I think what, what was most interesting to me in terms of this hashtag was how much you know similarity that a lot of african countries dealt with you know things were like corruption were similar things like all that but it was also recognizing that other africans from other african countries were really genuinely kind of or seemed to be emotionally invested in the betterment of other african countries so countries like nigeria and south africa and zimbabwe i, I use them as an example even tanzania of countries that had faith that of people of countries that people have faith in and you know an example is Rwanda because Rwanda um, in the hashtag was was the only one I think that had a very positive um, reputation and a lot of people seem to be pleased by the direction that it's going in and that's what I found interesting was that other African nations were happy um, for Rwanda um, and so some of the times it may seem like there's a bitterness towards Af other African countries when in actual fact, they just have a lot of faith um, in each other. Um, it just happens that we expect a lot so we get disappointed, you know. So that I, that I found very interesting. Worried or, you know, I had the feeling that I was aware that it could go terribly wrong and I could end up, you know, being embarrassed or... Um, my naivety being you know highlighted or something and a hashtag like this you know especially when you involve um countries that have large twitter bases for example kenyans um have a very are well known to be very territorial and very you know they can if they are offended the you know they have such a large you know twitter um audience or something that they you know it could become bigger than it is um south africa as well nigeria as well those are kind of countries that you want to be very well that i thought i you know i should be sensitive with but i never am so this could have gone much much worse to be honest with you and i'm so glad that it stayed in a positive light and people were able to kind of um really really take this to the max without being too offensive so i think the reason what i'm saying is that this hashtag made people happy i made me happy made people happy because they could contribute without fear of offending people without fear of being offended even i was offended you know several times but i knew that i shouldn't take things so personally i mean i was you know as usual they always end up you know saying how botswana is a country full of goat herders or something so <laughs> I'm I'm used to being called that, um, so it's fine. But you know, my point is, a lot of people were able to take their own feelings to the side and recognize that people were just being funny, but all the people were being concerned about you know di the direction of um, other people's countries. That's what I like to think, you know, because 
Um, I always have this kind of pan-Africanist agenda and I'm always hoping that things, you know, kind of unite the continent and we can all laugh and talk about things and, you know, react very cleverly to very unfortunate events. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really glad that it got as popular as it did. And I'm really glad it, that it got people talking and laughing together. And, yeah, so you should check it out. It's still very, very funny. And I think I favorited a lot of the tweets, so you can even check out my favorite ones. Or um, I'm sure there will be some on this website wherever this ends up. And, yeah, so that's Sienda Wright. Follow me on Twitter, Sienda, at Sienda Wright. Um, or go to my website, sienderwrights.com. Anyway, bye.